What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo, and we are here with the final week of the regular season of the LBA uh, up against Tactical Monkeys and the Brooklyn Bayonets. I'll be sure to leave his information in the description. Uh, a little bit of a tough prep this week with monsters such as Weavile, Rotom Wash, Skarmor. He even had Mega Altaria, which he did not end up bringing to this matchup. But to prepare for that, um, one of the main things that he had on his team that I was worried about too, that he could have brought Blissey. I was very surprised that he didn't bring that. I did bring a mixed Porygon Z uh, with adaptability, naive nature, a lot of speed, just enough to basically outpace um, any variant of Nidoking, Rotom Wash, uh, Skarmory, any of those things. I wanted to be fast enough, but uh, running return so that I could 2 KO the Blissey try attack Shadow Ball and Thunderbolt to get neutral coverage against his whole team very, very nicely. Uh, a very, very nice, um, basically this whole team is just life orb except for Charizard. So offensive Whimsicott, packing Shadow Ball for Espeon, uh, Moonblast, Giga Drain, Stun Spore, offensive Cobalion. I was very close to running at Scarf, but I thought he might not bring Weavile because Scarf Cobalion was just an obvious answer to it. Um, Swords Dance though, Close combat, Iron Head, and he had access to Chandelure, so I did put Stone Edge on my Cobalion. Uh, Adamant Life Orb, Mammo Swine, with uh, the nice mixed nature here too, going naive with max speed, with just enough special attack to 2 KO Rodom with uh, Freeze Dry, and the rest into my attack for a nice Ice Shard and uh, Earthquake Funness. Uh, we went with a defensive Charizard X, the Burninator, just to spread some d burns around his team. And then uh, Flare Blitz, Dragon Claw, Will-O-Wisp, Roost there. And then a nice Dragon Dance for Alligator. I only went with enough speed to outspeed something like a Choice Garf Rotom after plus one. Uh, if he decided to go modest, for example. Um, then the rest went into Bulk, which that Bulk actually ends up coming in handy. Now he starts off with Nidoking, which made me... Okay, I'm pretty sure that's Scarfed if he's going to start off with it. But Nidoking can't KO me unless he has Focus Blast, so I can take any hit. I just stayed in and went for a try attack here. Um, return would have been a little bit less powerful, but that actually is almost enough to take him out. I am gonna hold on to Porygon because even though he doesn't have Blissey, I can take uh, a lot of hits and I also outspeed a lot of things. And if he's Scarfed, he's stuck on Sludge Wave. And so I'm gonna switch out to Cobalion. Unfortunately, I don't have Volt Switch. And so it was kind of me, um, I'm gonna double out here as he switches out to Espeon. I go back into my Porygon. I was hoping that he'd go to Skarmory but he actually goes on into Espeon, and it's an offensive Espeon, so he does outspeed this Porygon if he were. The more bulky set or something like that, I could have outsped him and hit him with a Shadow Ball. Uh, but now I get to go out into Whimsicott here. I know I can take any hit from Espeon, and he's gonna be two hit KO by my Shadow Ball. Uh, it turns out that he's a Calm Mind variant. If he had just gone for the offensive move there, could have done a fair amount of damage to my Whimsicott, but since he went for Calm Mind, he is at such a critical level of HP that he's not going to be able to do much here. I'm just going to go for Moonblast here. In case he wants to switch out, uh, Moonblast is good neutral coverage against his whole team besides Skarmori. Uh, he does decide to go into Weavile here, and this is actually Abandoned Weavile. It's a huge threat to my team, and since I didn't see an item on it, uh, he actually ends up missing Icicle Crash there. I don't know how much that would have mattered because he would have been locked in on it, and since I had so much defensive investment, it would not have necessarily 2 it KO'd me after Mega Evolving. Um, but it would have forced me to Roost, but since he is forced to switch out, I do get a free Dragon Claw off here, and we see that his Rotom is definitely defensive. Uh, I figured, eh, I should just stay in here and see what he goes for. If he goes for Volt Switch, that'll be better for me to stay in and get a Will-O-Wisp on something. But he actually stays in and goes for Thunder Wave, which is going to end up sucking a lot later on because we have that very annoying chance of paralysis there. Um, I did have a lot of speed. I think I had 118 speed exactly because I didn't calc that to be enough to outspeed um, something like a Jolly Breloom. Um, and then the rest just went into my HP. He gets a useless crit on the Volt turn and I again, I just wanted to stay in here. And I did go for Flare Bullets there because it hit everything on his team really hard. And so staying in there nets me a huge boon as I'm able to hit this Skarmory down to Sturdy. I do take a lot of recoil damage, which is pretty annoying. Um, I didn't want to switch out here because if he set up his entry hazards, it'd be pretty hard for me to bring Charizard back in. Uh, so roosting here was more important to me than knocking out the Skarmory 
because if I knocked him out and he set up entry hazards and I got forced out by something else, then Charizard kind of loses its utility. But uh, we're both going to roost. He's going to get back up to full after the second roost. And now that I've roosted and I'm at full, I can go for Flare Bolts again. Just praying for no paralysis. I need to knock him back down to sturdy. But I do get paralyzed, which is pretty unfortunate. But that is to be expected. Uh, here, just going to stay in and go for Flare Blitz, expecting him to set up his rocks. But you see that I go first there. He's actually going to go for the Whirlwind to uh, uh, phase me out here. So that's not terrible. Um, I probably should have tried to burn the Skarmory. But he does phase me into... Um, Slushy the Mamoswine, which is pretty nice here. I expected him to switch into his Rotom, so I just went straight for Freeze Dry. I didn't necessarily want to reveal that secret, but the Rotom was not out of range after that Dragon Claw to where I could 2 hit KO it after an Icicle Crash and a Freeze Dry. Plus, there's a chance of missing Icicle Crash. No, it's no sense in, in wasting that, really. Uh, I'm going to go out here expecting the knockoff. And since he went for knockoff, I actually didn't know at this point that he was Bandit because it just didn't do that much damage because it's a Mega Pokemon, of course. I get paralyzed on my Roost right here. I knew he was going to switch out into Rotom, but I got paralyzed as I tried to go for a Roost. That would have been really nice because if I were at full HP or even 75% HP, I would have been able to take this Hydro Pump and retaliate with a Dragon Claw. And after Dragon Claw and an additional burn turn, he would have been KO'd most likely. But... That's not too terrible because I can go back out into my Whimsicott here and threaten him. Since I am fully offensive, I'm going to be able to do a lot of damage with Giga Drain. And even more nicely, I'm going to pick up some of the HP that I lost to my Life Orb earlier. Uh, so now I'm only down by 10% instead of being down by 30 or, uh, or you know, 40 after the attack. Uh, he is going to go back on into Skarmory. Uh, I'm sorry, the Weavile here. The Skarmory is not, uh, not an issue anymore. And I wasn't, sh again, I was thinking, okay, well, it looks like Feraligator is the Pokemon I need to sacrifice here. But I was like, holy snaps. The damage from that low kick shows me that he is banded and we can no longer play around with him. Um, I did just go straight for Waterfall. Now that I figured that he was banded, he can't KO me with another low kick. So Waterfall is my best play. Uh, I figured he could go out into Breloom, but I could easily switch in my Whimsicott on the Breloom. And I actually am pretty surprised that I actually can't switch in very easily because this Technician Bullet Seed does a lot of damage. He only gets uh, three hits on this first one. But if he gets two rounds of three hits, that's enough to, to easily 2 KO me. Uh, I figured the way he brought it in, it was probably Sash, and I really needed to break that Sash. And so just going straight for the Moonblast was the best play. And I crossed my fingers hoping that he would only get two hits on the Bullet Seed. One, and then two. And I get KO'd by two more because I took Life Orb Recoil. But that's okay. You know, he's at a range where he only has one HP left, so Slushy can come back in here, threaten with Ice Shard. And even if he had Mock Punch, it wouldn't KO me because I'm Naive Nature, which lowers your special defense, instead of being, uh, I think it's Hasty Nature that lowers your physical defense. So, um, yeah, that worked out pretty well. I Here, I know he's Bandit, so I'm just going to put some extra damage on him with Ice Shard. Uh, that extra damage is going to be really important because he locks into Low Kick, which is easily going to KO Mamoswine. And of course, I only have Cobalion and my Feraligator left. And since I went for that Ice Shard, Low Kick does not KO Feraligator. And Waterfall, without the Ice Shard, I think it was about a... I think he had about a 5% chance to live it without the Ice Shard. I do get a crit there in the end, but fortunately it didn't matter um, as far as whether or not that would have KO'd him or not. Because uh, if he had knocked out the Feraligator, of course, that would have left Cobalion. He would have been outsped and KO'd by yet another low kick. So thank you very much, Dylan, or Tactical Monkeys, for that awesome, awesome battle. And with that, the Eternity City Enders are actually in the playoffs for the Lithio Battle Association. Round one means we're going to be going back up against Skyrander, which is the legendary duel that we wanted. Remember, we actually traded our Dragonite to him earlier in the season to get Mega Charizard X, which was the Pokemon that I wanted at the beginning of the draft. It was his first round pick, and now, basically, thanks to that, we're here in the playoffs. So, uh, look forward to that nail-biting match there. I'm off work on Sunday, so we'll probably be battling on Sunday, and I'll get that battle up as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching this upload, and I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.